Hello guys, good afternoon. I hope everyone is doing great. Happy to see you all. Let's start this uh, webinar. I was waiting for nine minutes past the scheduled time so that uh, if there is someone else who would like to join, they can join. But anyway, as always, um, it's recorded and posted on YouTube when everybody in the community can watch it. Um, sure, so let's, let's begin. Um, Earlier, we used to do once in every month the meeting, but um, our product is quite different from uh, other products like where sometimes there might not be any updates because the product is still under uh, development. So I will not have anything to update you on it, which which uh, anyway, like I will be updating on my Twitter spaces, on my tweets, and even the official uh, Twitter channel of PCube. So... That's why we reduce the number of um, uh, monthly meetings to meeting once in every two months so that there will be a good amount of updates to make, which everybody will be able to appreciate. So guys, uh, it's been uh, amazing months. Like we, we made uh, several good progress, which I will be keeping it in front of you now. Um, as you know, uh, that the new product was launched. So this was the first thing. So it was launched exactly one month ago or probably one day less of a month because it was launched on March 30. Um, everybody loved it. Uh, they gave very good feedback on uh, the product and about the design, about the UX, about the UI. So we are very happy about it. There are many more uh, features that will be coming on the website and many more uh, things that we have planned already. But right now we are just uh, trying to fix uh, some small bugs um, uh, thanks to, again, uh, Zero and several other community members who pointed out certain bugs which was there on the platform. So we are fixing them one by one and most of them are already fixed, but there are few still which needs to be fixed and we are working on it. And we are, and once this is finished, like then we will move to adding some more new features that we are planning now like uh, ability to make your own stop loss, ability to set your own targets on every uh, strategy. So this is what we will be working next. Uh, we made like many new exchange integration. For example, we uh, integrated uh, Huobi uh, quite recently. It was there uh, since some time, but we never made any kind of partnership with them, officially speaking. So this is a kind of uh, official news for the partnership side. So we made a partnership with Huobi and we will be making uh, a webinar with them in, in this week where we'll be, uh, you know, presenting uh, live uh, with, with Huobi team uh, with their community to show them uh, how to use our platform, how to integrate it on Huobi and how to, you know, like set your product, uh, I mean, set your bot on your, uh, on your account, on your Huobi account and how you can start to trade with us. So this is something which is uh, very good because it was very nice of Huobi uh, uh, to allow us to make this webinar uh, on their official YouTube channel. Uh, it will be live and you can also join. I will be sharing the links with you when it's going to happen. But later on, it will be always posted on uh, YouTube. So who cannot be uh, live on uh, the webinar, but they can always uh, go back and check it. We'll also be discussing there about, you know, the products that is going to come and uh, the, the utilities of uh, the token that's going to be associated with this. So it will be a complete package. Um, and it's not a very short one, like 10 minutes or five minutes, which normally this kind of big exchanges give, but they are very kind enough to give us 30 minutes slot. So 30 minutes is good enough to cover everything. So we are preparing a very good presentation so that we will make a very professional, you know, uh, PowerPoint presentation to the people who will be coming there to watch it live. So that's going to be amazing. Um, it's just the beginning of the partnerships, one of the, one of the partnerships that we'll be doing because we want to make such kind of partnerships with many other exchanges. And also in return, we would like to make this kind of, um, you know, uh, webinars and other kind of informative, uh, uh, informations on uh, on crypto and on our products generally on other exchanges also. We have also applied for Binance feed. Uh, if you have uh, opened your uh, Binance app, for example, you can see a lot of people, uh, you know, suggesting a token, suggesting um, where where uh, uh, the market is going towards and giving you some updates and information, like how I do it every day in the morning on my Twitter channel. They do that on Binance Suite. So we have applied for it. I don't know whether it will be accepted or not because I have applied from Bcube's channel. So it, it speaks only about our product, but not generally about um, the 
uh, you know, like broader uh, picture about the markets. But let's see if that gets um, approved, then it's going to be great because it's um, it, it will be a good platform to speak about our products and to help uh, the adoption to happen much more rapidly. So th this is about uh, the, you know, like um, the new platform and the partnerships that we have done and many other partnerships are in the pipeline already. And we are already working with, as I said, with some with exchanges, some with um, some other kind of people. And we are also exploring uh, partnerships with other kind of projects also, especially in the AI sector. Um, in the AI sector, like hardly I can say two or three uh, projects like which were in AI before, just like us and who are in AI now, and they're doing really something great in AI field, probably in some verticals like much more advanced than us, because their scope is not just about trading, but their scope is like quite wide, like they are using AI in so many different things. So that's why it will be very interesting to see uh, um, uh, like which, which partnership will be very good uh, for us and good for them as well. Because it's not just about us, it's mutual. That's how the partnership works. Um, secondly, like uh, when we make a partnership with someone, we don't want to make it for the sake of uh, making any partnership, but we should be able to derive some value from that partnership, not just in terms of uh, getting more community members, but also in terms of like working together, which, which can help uh, something in our own product development. And for them also like where we can add some value to it. So we have shortlisted a couple of projects. So we'll be discussing with them um, going forward to see how we can partner uh, with them. Um, and and um, after that, um, we we are also uh, marketing, as you can see, um, we, we have, uh, you know, like published many articles in different uh, journals. We are getting backlinks and slowly our SEO is getting better and better. We, we are also getting reviews on uh, SourceForge, uh, SourceForge, thanks to our community members who are giving uh, a lot of uh, reviews there. But, uh, you know, the reviews are very small. I think we we we, we are a big community, but still, like, uh, the reviews are not up to the size of our community. So more and more people have to go there and, you know, make some reviews. Hardly it takes, like, two, three minutes to make the review. It's not such a big thing. So everyone needs to participate uh, to make this a very big success because there is, um, on SourceForge, there are many competitors of us. Um, who are also having their reviews. But if we have the highest review in that category, then we will have like very good chance of uh, being the first uh, first product uh, on that particular platform where people can find us very easily. So this is uh, what I feel. And like this is where we need uh, help from the community members to go there, to make some reviews, um, to, to grow our strength there in the platform. We are also uh, planning to, you know, integrate Binance US, but unfortunately we are not able to get a Binance US account because we need to integrate there and run some test before releasing it to the public because we need to see how it works and wh in what logic it works and uh, when, when it can be a, a difficult, uh, you know, scenario for us, like whether it's uh, the setting of the stop loss or something, it's very purely technical things. So we need to test that one. Unfortunately, we are not able to get any exchange account from Binance US. We have even applied for a you know corporate account using our own company's um, uh, cred credentials and details, but it takes a long time to get an account on Binance US for a company because normally here in Europe, like or any general exchange, if you speak, it takes between fifteen to twenty days or maximum one month uh, to finish all the KYB process. But in US, it's it's a bit different and it's difficult. So it takes between one to two months. So if we can get this uh, quickly, then we can even support Binance US and we can welcome the US clients also. Because so far what we have done and what um, uh, we have achieved or onboarded the clients are mostly from Europe, uh, mostly from Western Europe, and not, not even uh, all parts of Europe. So, and and in our mailing base or in our subscriber base, nearly 30 to 35% are coming from United States. So we, we haven't even explored them yet because we cannot onboard them as of now. All exchanges, including Binance, the normal Binance.com, they have a sandbox environment like where you can test your strategies, like kind of like a test net of an exchange. But uh, such a thing doesn't exist for Binance US. And we try to, you know, like uh, speak to some of the people whom we know in the United States, but no one is willing to give their account. Uh, we, we even said like, look, you use the account and uh, we will just run some tests and we just run some uh, trades on uh, your exchange. You just let us know like if it's fine. 
they they were they were not so open because of taxation reasons maybe or maybe because of some other reason so we we are still not able to get binance us but if you have any friends or family uh, in united states having a green card and they are a us person when i say us person it's either a person like having a us passport or like a us green card only then it will be possible for them to have a binance us um, account I spoke to a couple of community members and even to Dennis, um, who is also there here on the call, like who is in the United States, but uh, it's not possible as I explained to you uh, the reason that they need to be a US person. So if you have someone like then uh, we can run the test and very soon like we can integrate uh, Binance US also so that we can onboard US clients. Even, even for marketing, it's much more easier to uh, do it in United States because the people are, uh, um, there are many people in the United States who are in crypto. Um, and also like when we make a target marketing for us specifically then it's it will be far more easier than uh, targeting other people uh, the reason is uh, in europe we all speak different languages uh, for for hungary like you can make your advertisements in uh, english but not many people are comfortable with that it has to be in the local language so if you're speaking about france of course france we are not able to make anything until we get dasp registration but if we make it in Germany, although mostly people are comfortable with um, English, but still German language is more uh, favorable there. So it's the same thing uh, with most of the European countries. But in United States, you know, it's English. So it's far more easier to do something there in um, United States, in Australia, than in uh, other parts of the world. So that's why we, we want to focus too much on uh, the US clients and to onboard them because they are already there in our list. So they are already there in our funnel and we just have to convert them. And especially with the freemium plan that we have currently, I'm, I'm sure like we will be getting a lot of users uh, if we try to get this Binance US account. So uh, uh, th that's about uh, the new exchange integration and we are also planning to integrate OKX Actually, we, we made the test and everything is fine. So we, it's just about like um, some final things and uh, we, we can even onboard clients from OKX. I'm still trying to negotiate with the exchange, like what kind of benefits we get uh, by doing this one, because it's it's not that like we, we cannot integrate a particular exchange. We can integrate any exchange on this planet. We can make all these APIs and these things are not the real issue. But once we you, you do it, like uh, you're spending a lot of time, you know, like to integrate an exchange, it takes one week. But if you don't get much of uh, help or support from them, then it's just you are supporting, but you don't get any benefit from that. Because if that is the case, then I don't want to waste time on that because there are anyway uh, other exchanges like which is already supported and our users are quite happy about that one. So if we have to waste that one week on uh, this particular task of um, integrating a new exchange, then I would like to see that there is an added advantage uh, for me to do so. Otherwise, there is no point in investing even that one week because that one week can be used for something else, you know, bringing up a new feature, fixing something on the website or making something better um, um, like uh, with the existing uh, website or features or like working on some other product. We can, we can do so many things. So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm asking them like, okay, let's do it. But what is the other things that you are going to get to us because maybe existing users are quite happy with huobi or bitget or binance or um, any other exchanges that we are currently you know uh, supporting like bitmax or something so if our users have to go on that new exchange they need to see some value add there probably you will get much lesser fees or something else so that's why i want to be very sure that we are getting something more and, uh, you know, Huobi actually promised me that they will be deepening the relationship even after the integration and it will not stop there. And they're doing it, actually. They, they are keeping their words. And keeping the words in crypto field is almost non-existent <laughs> because I speak to so many people, they, they promise you very big things. But when it comes to delivering the things, they are not there at all. Once you do it, they, they, they are not there. Uh, you know, like you, you can keep asking them uh, the questions again and again. They will not reply to your messages. They won't even see your messages. It's like, okay, you did it. Now it's been fixed. I don't care. So that, that should not be the case. So I want to derive as much value as possible in, in every single minute that we put on certain tasks. So or I'm, I'm in discussion with OKX. We, we have already finished the work also, so which, uh, which I'm very honest here. So that's why we are seeing like what more we can get so that we can uh, onboard those clients also to our ecosystem and to go forward from there. 
so this is about uh, the new exchange or integration part um and and uh, next topic is about the strategy factory and strategy selector based products um, so uh, let's keep like i don't want to use this word again and again because it's too big so let me call it as like metabots project so metabots um as i said like the core technology is completely ready from the quantitative uh, trading side the backtesting engine or the strategy selector or the strategy factory everything is finished it's completely ready since a long time we are even running the test on our laptops um, and because it was not on aws so we we are doing all this kind of test and we are getting amazing results from it and we are very 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 satisfied from uh, the results that we are able to see it really because it's really working but uh, when when it comes to you know like uh, integration side like which is a tech side more like front end back end and uh, also the infrastructure side because you need to host it on aws so this is the work like which is still going on um we we tried to make the product a little bit more sophisticated which also took a little bit more time for us because we uh, initially the plan was to make it like with a um, single coin um and then like there was a bit of work from the user side that they had to set certain things and then we decided within the team that like um no when we come out with this uh, product like then there should be almost no work to user at all it should be plug and play so this is what everybody were asking for also so that's why we to make it according to the expectation of the people like we took a little bit more time to see like what else we can do so what we thought about it is um there will be of course like one uh, strategy like which is um, bitcoin alone ethereum alone and bitcoin ethereum together and bitcoin ethereum bnb xrp and cardano together so there there will be lots of such kind of combinations and um, what it does is like it will pick the strategy it will pick the direction also so something can be long and something can be short at the same time and everything can be long at the same time everything can be short at the same time it can be anything and also it will try to set the portfolio for you automatically like something can be you know like uh, let me say if there are five coins it can be 20 each just giving an example or it can be like uh, four coins with just like 10 each which will be 40 percent allocation and the fifth coin might be 60 percent of the weight because that's the best combination to make the pro uh, make make the profitable trade so it's it's doing all these things automatically and it will keep doing it like uh, every one hour once or any every few hours once whenever it feels like it's the right time there will be like one hour candle based uh, strategy and there will be uh, one day based strategy so it depends on so many things so we also thought of like much more sophistication like for people who want um, you know like a kind of like risk re reward ratio to be um, equal then they can go for something like a hourly uh, strategy or someone like a little bit like lower risk people can go for a daily strategy which will make uh, you know decision based on a daily candle and or like weekly or monthly basis so monthly basis will be more like a positional one which will be making uh, you know this kind of portfolio rebalancing once in a month so there will be different kind of uh, products so all these products uh, when we conceptualize it it will be you know like taking some time because we need to ask questions like okay if five coins are there what happens like if something is having an unrealized loss it's unrealized loss which is not booked yet and if another bot wants a higher allocation at that point in time then you will not have that money because it's an unrealized loss so how we will deal with this one and how we will adopt this trade to the current execution engine that we have because the current execution engine as you know, like in last one year, we never had any kind of bugs or anything as such. It was simply working, perfectly working, and it's fast also. So, uh, but but the behavior of MetaBots are very different from what we have now because currently uh, the bots that we are offering is it it is either long and short or long only. There is no you know third kind of scenario here, like with, with the same bot like doing both long and short at the same time and making the allocation of uh, assets at the same time, rebalancing at the same time. This nature is very, very new to this execution engine. So that's why we had to adopt the nature of, um, you know, MetaBots to the nature of um, the new execution engine like that uh, we will be modifying it. Or we, we have to, you know, modify um, the current execution engine to the way how the MetaBots work. So that's why even this work is also currently going on to adopt it. 
And all these strategies will be on AWS to make it much more faster. Before we were using Heraku, which is very uh, good, which is great, but uh, it's not it's not uh, it's not good for uh, AI related stuff. Like for that one, AWS is the best. And also over a period of time, we'll be saving a lot of money by using AWS than using Heraku. So that's why we made this transition to go towards AWS. We hired even infrastructure lead who comes from a ledger, uh, having a lot of experience from ledger. So he has seen it all in the crypto field. So he's going to give um, very good architecture and he has planned it and he has started already. So we are migrating one by one to AWS. And this, this particular product also will be migrated there. So it's not about the technology that uh, needs to be migrated because the technology behind it is completely ready. But it's more about the infrastructure work. It's more about uh, the product work itself because the product to adopt to the execution engine and everything. So this is the work that is going on. And this is happening because we wanted to make a very sophisticated product and very simple to use from the user side. But it's not so simple for us to develop it. It it's simple in the sense like it takes time to come out with something which is very new and which is very innovative because such a product doesn't exist in the market like which keeps doing such things. I used myself like uh, this uh, auto rebalancing uh, you know bot which is there on uh, Binance and on several other platforms also like on uh, KuCoin and OKX, but it's doing in a very you know like a, in a very simple way like that 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 you don't really need any technology at all. It is just doing a trend following uh, kind of a uh, trades, but um, market is not always trend following. Sometimes it's mean reverting also. Sometimes it's news driven also. Sometimes it can be so many things happening at the same time. So that's why we we created this robust network. So wherein, you know, like you have a trend following, you have mean reversion, you have like so many exogenous things going on at the same time. So it's going to be a great product. And we have tested it, as I'm saying, like we are seeing it on uh, the couple of uh, back tests and the kind of uh, signals it's generating. But once we do it, then we will be uh, able to, you know, like make a couple of tests in the real and time environment. And we will also make some beta testing with a couple of users, like whoever wants to use it with some 10 or 20 users. So once you have beta testing, you will be really able to feel it, experience the product. And after this, this part is finished, then, um, you know, like we will make the signals and everything uh, on, on the website live uh, so that people can watch it also, like how it's behaving and how it really works so that you will get a first-hand experience of it. And then we will commercialize it. So as of now, there is no estimated time of arrival, but we will be trying to bring it as soon as possible. It can be like one month or one and a half month. Yes, it's going to take that much of time. But uh, when it comes, like I'm sure like everybody will be very, very happy and it's really worth the time that uh, we we will be spending on this particular product. Because of only one reason that um, it's not a simple strategy, like what we first thought, like to make it just like long and short, like with one individual coins. No, we have created like now the Metabots with uh, several coins within the same thing. So you don't even have to pick like, um, I, I want to trade BTC or I want to trade ETH or something. Take one big Metabot, all the coins are inside, forget it. Like it's going to do all the long and short and everything for you. And for people who want to use only long only strategies and not long and short because they don't like futures trading, we have a product even for that. So there, there are like all these kind of products, which is um, coming up and that's why it's taking time, but uh, it's taking time because we want the best product to hit the market, best product to be on our uh, marketplace and not just another kind of product. We have learned a lot from the previous decisions that we made and we know like what worked, what didn't work. And when it didn't work like now, we know like how to make it work. And we know like what is the thing that will not work at all. So having all this information, having all these experiences uh, from the last years, we, we are totally committed in launching a product that's really going to be good and which everybody is going to appreciate it. And once we, we are done with this particular product, then we'll be going for build your own AI bot, which is also like super amazing product because this product is um, will be using you know this AI infrastructure the same uh, AI infrastructure which will be used in Metabots, but it will be available for people like to build their own bots. Um, so UK first first edition will be releasing a zero code edition, like where you don't need to code anything, just you have to select certain kind of rules, make your own bot, and you can backtest it. 
And if the back testing is good, then you can deploy it. So we will just give you like one uh, back test free with the strategy factory and strategy selector. Only one back test with this one. Regular back test, you can make it as much as you want. Uh, regular back, back testing like unlimited will be available for everybody. But using the strategy factory and strategy selector, you will have like only one chance like to do it. But if you want to do it again and again using that, you will have to pay for it. And the payment will be only from Bcube. So imagine like uh, the major use case of Bcube now will be based on this particular um, you know product. And that's really amazing because people have to choose our platform and not some other platform to build your own But Why? Because we have this secret sauce that is with us. So for using this one, we will create a kind of wallet like where you have to, uh, you know, you have to drop in a couple of um, B cubes. You just have to load up your wallet and you just have to leave it. So every time when um, you want to backtest it, when every time when you want to use it, it will be reduced by, it will be taken from that wallet automatically. So that's why you will have to, you know, like load your uh, B cubes there if you want to really uh, use this strategy factory and selector like for uh, your own strategies. So how it works is like when you build a bot, like each time when it is a time to generate a new signal in each intervals of time, it will be again taking your strategy through the, it, it's imagine like your strategy is here, strategy selector is here, this is your end trade. And now the trade is finished because it will be based on certain candles. And let me say you are selecting it like for one hour candle. So one hour is finished and next one hour, like it will again go back, back test it, and go through the strategy factor and strategy selector, the trade will happen. So every time it will pass through this one so that you will be your strategy will be ahead of any other platform. And it will be, you know, um, it will be selecting a strategy that is the best strategy at this point in time, in this time frame particularly. So you will have very high chances of winning in this way because the strategy what you built before, that was good like based on the historical data. But now what you're building, it's based on the historical data plus the most recent data, which is what is happening in this time frame. So that's why, um, you know, like people need to have a lot of Bcube tokens in their wallets, like if they want to, you know, use this one. So all these tokens, like what we'll be really uh, uh, receiving as a fees for using this particular technology, that will be completely burnt. So we will not be bringing it back to the markets. It will be just getting burnt like from there itself. And all the payments uh, already, which is uh, being received uh, by Bcube for the subscriptions. I'm very happy, like a lot of people are paying for the subscriptions using Bcube. So that's very good. And we have nearly 90,000 Bcubes, which will be burnt very soon, uh, forever. And then like whatever the Bcubes we will be releasing during this product also, even that will be completely, you know, burnt. So it, it will be uh, exciting two products. So this is kind of like a flagship products of Bcube. The one thing is like our own strategies, plus there'll be a strategy, uh, you, you know, like your, your own uh, uh, strategies that you will be able to build it, like which is build your own AI bot. So these two things are, are the new products that will be coming up. So uh, uh, next topic would be, um, um marketing see uh we we contacted some of the very uh, big influencers like uh, which i don't want to take their name but uh, everybody knows it like uh, or everybody wants us to work with this kind of uh, influencers but when we contacted them like at least 99 percent of them uh, don't want to work with uh, any project like which is uh, not among the top 100 or top 200 on coin market cap so it's not that like we don't want to work with them but uh, they don't want to work with any projects which is not among the top 100 or 200 on coin market cap or coin gecko so if we are under 200 top 200 yes they will work with us but of course like they will take money and everything but uh, even if you pay them now no they are not working with us so that's the kind of uh, answers that we got we went through several agencies but that didn't help because that's the rule like what the influencer is making for himself so they will not do it but there are other kind of people who have credibility and who are also well known. I'm pretty sure like most of uh, you will know their names or might have seen their Twitter or like might have seen their YouTube uh, videos. They have agreed to work with us. So how we are working with them is um, we are giving them half the money in uh, fiat currency and half the money in our tokens. And why we are giving them token is because, you know, they, they need to have skin in the game. Because if you give them uh, the tokens, then they will work for it. 
But if you just give them a USDT or something, it just becomes a work for them. Like, okay, like, fine. Like, we will do something. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So that that shouldn't be the case. So that's why we are making like half in Bcubes and half in uh, USDT. So that like they, they, they will have some ownership and they will feel that like, yes, they need to do it because even they need to earn uh, their money. And we are doing a lot of due diligence before selecting any um, influencer. We are watching like uh, what was the recent projects they worked with and what was the kind of like um, impact that was there uh, on the project, like in terms of um, uh, increase in the community members, increase in the product uh, users, or increased in terms of signups on the platform, or increase in the token price, uh, what exactly changed after these people came? And also there is another layer of, a layer of DD because maybe this influencer is not the only one who worked on this project at the same time. Imagine like I was working with five people and you know, like the token price went up by three X. So if one person is saying like, no, it's because of me, like you will never know if it's because of only this person or if it's because of other four also like who are involved with this one, or if it was just because of one person among the five and four others are just taking credit for it. So that's why we need to do a lot of due diligence. And this is how we are selecting, uh, you know, influencers. Because last year we worked with a couple of them. It was not great. We worked with uh, Washcoin. Washcoin was good. We we could get some real users and uh, some of them purchased the product. Some of them joined the community. We worked with Altcoin Buzz, but uh, there is no buzz there. It's just Altcoin things. So they, they, that was totally waste of time and waste of money. So that's why we don't want to repeat the same mistakes that we have done in the past. So we have to learn from our mistakes and we have to you know bounce back from uh, that point. That's why we are making uh, a lot of due diligence and selecting the influencers carefully because if the influencer is not even in trading or if his um, target audience is not someone like who really wants uh, to work with us, then it's of no use. Because you see, like on Twitter, um, um, there are like some uh, women influencers who shill coins sometimes, but um, most probably they are all only fans uh, models. If you see their, uh, you know, profile and like their contact list, like, come on, like only fan models cannot be real influencers. Like they're, they're, they're uh, audience or someone different. Like they're just coming to see her or like what she's doing or what kind of photo she's posting. But that's not our category. Our category is more with the trading people who are, who are associated themselves with some kind of trading things, or they should have their own company or YouTube content, which is focused on traders, which is focused on DeFi just focus on like some kind of launch pads or something like which is either crypto related completely you should go to that game or you should come to like your product related if it's both it's amazing so that's how we need to select it and we have shortlisted a couple of them and we are planning to work with one by one uh, everybody in uh, this category that we have made and i'm very sure like we will be having amazing results uh, with this kind of people um and you know like um uh, there are like this kind of giveaways and stuff like that. Like, uh, first of all, I don't believe in giveaways at all because, the, um, you know, like uh, as I've heard like several times, like this um, giveaways are kind of like people who can use your product in the future. And they, they are kind of like, um, you know, customers like who are in the funnel and they might use your product in the future if uh, it's doing something great. It's just nonsense. It doesn't work like that because this... Um, you know, like this giveaway people have no quality at all. They have zero quality. And all these guys are like, uh, they're coming only to get that freebies and they just move to something else. So they, it's it's a completely uh, useless way of marketing. The, the most useless way of marketing by spoiling your name is giveaway marketing. But recently we did giveaway with two people because these two people, I have verified that they really have Bold Ape Yacht Club NFTs. They really have it. And you can see their names and everything on uh, open seas. Like, so I did a lot of uh, thing, uh, background check on these people and they also do giveaway kind of uh, marketing. And why I did that one was because, you know, it was giving visibility for the project, like with many, many people. I just wanted like people to know that we exist. I just wanted people to know that like uh, they, they just see it once. So it was not really aimed at uh, getting users or something, but it was just aimed at like getting some kind of PR among this kind of people. Because if someone is having really a uh, board Ape Yacht Club uh, NFT, and you know, like he will have a different kind of weight, then his audience, not everybody will be like that, but there might be some people who might be interested also. 
So that's why we just tried it as a kind of um, experiment. But uh, in the past, like what we saw with uh, giveaways was like just crazy, like it doesn't work at all. And also for such campaigns to work, like what is very important is a very active community, like where people are discussing a lot about trading, a lot about, uh, you know, like markets and a lot about the products and these kind of things. But when such kind of people will land up on your community and they see almost no chats and like someone is asking a question, but he gets no answer or like um, someone is asking a question, but he doesn't get an answer strictly to his question. But it's like a kind of like a sneaky way of answering. Or like if there is no activity at all, like nobody wants to be there. So this is also one of the factors that will contribute in building the community. Because if the community is very active, then uh, it, it invites more and more people. For the people, uh, you know, um, whom I can see here is uh, Tom or David or someone like who were there with us um, for a very, very long time from 2020 or something. When they were there in uh, our very small, uh, you know, Telegram channel, like which was clients chat. It used to be so vibrant that um, minimum on an average, there used to be 100, 120 chats per day. And if it is so active, if it is so uh, vibrant, then people will be more and more happy to be in that one and to feel that like they belong to something. So we need that type of community back. So then uh, people who are joining, they, they would like to be part of that kind of uh, environment, that part of vibes. So that is also very important for people who join to be there, to remain there, because there is three part of the process. First thing is to get them. Second thing is to retain them. And third thing is to convince them. So there are three different parts of it. Some parts is, of course, like we have to do it. Some part community has to do it. So that's how we build this community together. So we are doing a lot of um, such kind of marketing and such kind of um, influences. We are discussing with them constantly and uh, we are sure like we will be able to onboard those kind of trading related, um, you know, um, uh, influencers, which can bring huge value to our uh, our project and to our ecosystem. Um, and then, uh, yeah, like... Um, we, we we are uh, raising funds through uh, sale of equity. So we have a couple of angels like who have shown interest. Uh, so we, we are also waiting for other venture capitals to, you know, like to reply to us. And there are a couple of meetings that's going to happen uh, in May. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So once we raise the funds, like we would like to a little bit expand the team and focus on like more uh, spending more money on the marketing and everything. Because right now we don't want to, you know, like use our runways for um, uh, too much of marketing, like spending $50,000 a month or $30,000 a month. But we want to keep it like quite conservative to do the things, what is necessary to onboard the users. But of course, it's a very, um, you know, like a long term ongoing process. So once we get the funds, like then uh, we'll be allocating a very big portion of it, like for only marketing to raise the awareness of um, people. So yeah, pretty much uh, that's it guys. Like if you have any questions, so please uh, go ahead and ask in the chats. I will be very happy to answer. Thank you. So I see one question, any alpha till now? I think there was a big alpha. <laughs> you can uh, see it once again. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we will go to that part also. Summer is almost here, Emmy community meetups plans. Yeah, sure, like we can make one in Hungary, like how uh, we did it last uh, time. There will be a community meetup for sure here in Hungary. Don't worry, Edwin, I'm still here live. So if you have something, you can speak to me and you will be able to watch the recording later on.
any meetups planned for Paris? Uh, not not so far. Maybe yes. We will let you know at the right time. Sure, yeah, as always, like it will be recorded and posted on uh, YouTube because there are so many people who will watch it later on, but they cannot be here at this point in time. Sure, they can watch it later. While, uh, while everyone uh, thinks of a question, um, I will be going quickly to market updates also. I think market is a bit range bound now between $27,000 to $30,000. Uh, very soon we might see a breakout, which can lead to $31,000 to $35,000 and eventually to $40,000 also. But honestly, even now I feel, I believe that uh, after it reaches a top of $40,000 or something, then markets will drop uh, and it will drop very badly. Probably it might come back to twenty thousand uh, dollars at that point, or even lower than twenty thousand um, dollars. Um, so yeah, like I think um, it's it's going to be uh, you know uh, something similar to what we have seen in the past. So we have seen the same thing in uh, two thousand fifteen, two thousand seventeen. So I don't think it will be so different this time, especially uh, now because there are wars going on, the economy is not doing good, many banks are closing. Yeah, like there are people who believe that when banks close, crypto prices will go up. But I don't really feel that one. I don't believe that uh, because when people are losing the money, they it's not that like they will go to Bitcoin to put it um, because not many people even believe in Bitcoin. Even now, it's very early. So uh, people who are in this space, they feel it that way. Like, yeah, everybody will come to it. But I have spoken to many people who are not in Bitcoin and who don't know about it at all. And it takes a lot of time uh, for them to get themselves educated about Bitcoin, about cryptocurrencies and why it can be a better option. But I don't see that happening uh, very soon. So macroeconomics are not looking good at all. So I do expect uh, the corrections to happen uh, when we talk. But I Think this top will be around 35 to 40 thousand dollars and i don't think like after reaching 35 or 40 like it will keep increasing and it will enter some kind of bull market definitely not uh, it's still bull market is like one one and a half years away from here we are in a bear market and we will be in bear market for good period of time so what i uh, what i am thinking myself is like when uh, it reaches 35 thousand dollars or like somewhere around that it's a uh, best time to start to short or when it comes to like $27,000 now, it can be a good place to buy it also. But if $27,000 is broken, then it can come to twenty five dollars and even lower uh, uh, prices because bears will get uh, very active there. Mostly now, if I'm seeing, um, you know, long and short on, uh, on a GMX exchange and decentralized derivatives exchange, there is more number of uh, longs than shorts, like $100 million worth of longs and $25 million worth of shorts. Um, when so many people are bullish, uh, things can go bearish also, but still somewhat uh, the momentum has stayed around this $29,000. So let's see, this is what I feel that like market will revisit the lows that we have seen in the past. For the build a bot uh, section, you mentioned it will be a no code implementation at the start. How do you see it evolving? Will I be able to create an API, for example, and call the bot uh, from a custom app? Um, um, no, it, 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 it on the user interface, you will be able to select a certain kind of conditions, like what kind of conditions you would like the bot to trigger a buy or a sell. So you will put both the buy conditions and the sell conditions. And then you will uh, backtest it, either plain backtesting with your strategy, or you will use even uh, the strategy selector. And you will even say that uh, how many variations of the strategies you want, and whether you want like uh, 10 variations or 25 variations or 100 variations or 1000 variations. But we will not be allowing uh, everybody to use so much of variations because it will consume a lot of uh, cloud computing cost for us. Because uh, in my opinion, like 25 to 50 variations is more than enough and you will be able to get better results. So once you run all these different variations, then at the end, our strategy selector will tell you which variation among them was the best. It will be displayed on the UI. That's how it's going to work. So then uh, once you see it, like you will have different iterations, which will also be there. 
And when the strategy selector is always already saying like uh, among the 25 variations, the 15th variation was the best, you can select it or you can select any variations like which was there among this top 25 uh, to start to trade with that one. Hope this answers your question. So guys, any, any more questions? If nothing is there, like we can uh, can finish it here. But if you have any more questions, I'm more than happy to answer you. Okay, guys, then um, let's uh, end this session here. Uh, once again, I'm very happy that um, yeah, we, we we have a question. Is the PSAM agreement process is going good? Yes, it's going amazing. Uh, uh, 3rd of May, like which is uh, next week, after the long weekend, we have a meeting with uh, ACPR, which is which is a, you know, like it's a French uh, organization belonging to the Central Bank of France. We are having a meeting with them as well as with the AMF. So it will be happening on 3rd of uh, May. Uh, which will be a call to explain a little bit more about ourselves and explain a little bit more about uh, the flow diagram uh, of um, how how the entire process works like for custodian services or for brokerage services um, and how we will be dealing with uh, KYB, uh, stuff like that, and also the introductions of the founders and um, the business model and several other uh, questions concerning the compliance itself, like how we will enforce it. So we'll be having uh, a meeting on this one. So it's, it's going on good, like they're quite satisfied with our uh, documents because they asked for a little bit more documents. A couple of uh, weeks ago, we submitted it and it got submitted and they said that they are happy and they are going ahead with the process. So um, yeah, I mean, like uh, we, do, we don't see any issues there. We, we are on, on the track and everything is going on fine as far as uh, DSP registration is concerned. And once we get it, like it's, it's going to be a very good game changer because uh, we will be offering custodian services for um, uh, B2B customers. So this is, this is very profitable for us. And also um, in terms of cost also, it's very low because to get uh, B2C customers, like you need to do a lot of um, marketing and there is a lot of expense involved uh, with that. But when you speak about um, B2B, like it's very different because if you get one client and the client will remain with you for a very long time. Um, and and they are not so much demanding uh, customers also, so it's it's quite different. So that's why I'm very positive about DSP registration. It's going on great. Okay, guys, then it was amazing talking to you all uh, once again. So if there is uh, something else, I will always update you on uh, Twitter and Twitter Spaces. So. There's a, honestly, whatever I said now, like you all know it because I'm always tweeting about it. I always spoke about uh, these things on my Twitter spaces. And sometimes I enter into Telegram to update you there and to answer some of the questions. Yeah, so nothing is new, but uh, it's always my pleasure to, you know, like to come in front of you to discuss about this one uh, face to face. And I give an opportunity for everybody to speak with me, to ask me questions. And I'm always here to answer this one to everybody. So guys, uh, have a great week and thanks for your time for being here with me on uh, Saturday afternoon. I wish you a very great weekend um, and uh, have a nice day going forward. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye, guys. Bye.